The way in which radio access and network infrastructure is being managed is changing. And one of the operators leading the way in the deployment of next generation cutting edge technology is Canada's TELUS. Well, to find out more, I'm talking today with Bernard Bureau, Vice President of Wireless Strategy and Services at TELUS, and Stephen Wiptorski, Vice President and Head of Networks at Samsung Canada. Welcome both to Telecom TV. Uh, now, TELUS and Samsung recently announced they have worked together on the deployment of Canada's first AI-powered RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, on a commercial network. Can you tell me about this collaboration and how it came about? Uh, Bernard, let's come to you first. Sure. Um, TELUS selected the Samsung Networks as a radio supplier five years ago. And since then, we've been able to build an excellent relationship. One of the main differentiating, differentiating factors uh, versus other suppliers was their roadmap for supporting true ORAN and virtual RAN. And since then, we, we've had an amazing journey. And uh, we believe that uh, today, TELUS is the best example globally that open RAN and virtual RAN can meet the highest brownfield deployment requirements. So building on this great relationship, when it came to selecting our non-real-time RIC platform supplier, we decided to select Samsung Networks again. Um, their commitment to openness was very important to us. We had experienced the same thing as we went through our open RAN deployment where we use radios from Samsung, of course, but also from Amplitech on all our micro sites. For the RIC, besides deploying our apps from Samsung, we will also deploy third party our apps and we're going to build some ourselves as well. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that the Samsung RIC would be able to manage any open RAN equipment that we have in our network because that is what Open Run is about. Um, deploying Open Run and Virtual Run architecture already gives TELUS a ton of benefit, uh, but the non-real-time rig brings it to the next level in terms of being able to use AI easily and automate closed-loop automation in the run. Okay, great. Uh, and Stephen, can we get your perspective on this collaboration as well? Yeah, absolutely. So just to echo what Bernard said, we've been working together since 2019 when we first entered the run uh, with TELUS. And our collaboration has been uh, nothing short of, of fantastic. Uh, together, we've implemented an architecture which embodies the, the truest vision of Open RAN. And uh, the RIC is the next logical step uh, along that path and something that Samsung's been working on for quite some time. It also you know, is aligned with our broader strategic vision of deploying end-to-end -end software networks that are deployed on commodity hardware with open interfaces, which we believe is going to be the bedrock or the foundation for uh, AI-powered autonomous networks. And so, to partner with a, a company like Telus, who you know shares that vision and is acting on that vision, is refreshing. And I think it's something that we're going to see uh, a lot of uh, additional, um, you know, announcements and a lot of additional uh, benefits for te both Telus and Samsung in the coming years. Okay, great. Uh, well, let's delve uh, a little deeper. Um, what kind of applications are being deployed here and what's the anticipated timeline? Um, Stephen, let's start with you on this. Well, I think you can break the applications into two broad sort of sections. You've, you've got your traditional CSON applications, which obviously provide um, you know, a lot of uh, operational benefits for TELUS. And then there's a second set of applications, which are AI powered applications, which uh, Samsung's been working on hard for the last couple of uh, uh, years. And their applications such as, you know, KPI anomaly detection, and uh, which obviously detects KPIs and, and allows uh, degradation KPIs and allows us to provide root cause analysis and, and to remedy those uh, KPIs. There's energy savings managers and, and load balancing manager, which given the number of bands that TELUS have uh, are very beneficial applications, allowing them to lower their costs and, and will also get the absolute maximum performance from, from their network. Um, we're anticipating that we'll have these applications up and running in their network in, in the coming months. Uh, and then obviously, as we sort of go forward, we'll see more and more applications coming in from both ourselves, TELUS and from third parties. Okay, great. Uh, and Bernard, if we can hear from you on this as well. Uh, the few apps that uh, Steve just mentioned are going to have a really meaningful impact on our customer's experience on our network. And that is what I'm mostly excited about. Yes, of course, there is efficiency with the RIC, 
um, uh, replacing, you know, human interventions from our engineers so that they can focus on more important tasks. And that's, that's excellent. But also the ability to resolve problems that are simply too complex for humans to resolve in a timely manner. Um, if I take the load balancing as an example, our network is incredibly complex uh, with nine bands of LTE and four of NR from 600 megahertz to 3.8 gigahertz. Our networks can't be optimized for the worst case scenario only. We need to be optimized based on the current context. And that implies a lot more ongoing configuration optimization than ever before. And as you can imagine with so many bands in play and with a lot of pressure from the traffic demand, our sites should not be configured the same way for managing traffic early Sunday morning as for Thursday at 5 p.m. or during a music festival or for a site that's just there to provide rural coverage on the highway. So this is where, for example, the R apps managing the load balancing comes into play. Depending on the current context as predicted by AI, the right configuration for the right time, considering the individual coverage conditions of the users will truly maximize the customer's experience on our wireless network. And that means multiple changes of configuration per day and per cell. So even with a large army of engineers, we wouldn't be able to do this. And with the hundreds of millions of dollars of capacity being injected in our network every year, being more efficient on our asset utilization is an incredible business outcome. Another example, you know, the RAN generates more than 7,000 counters every five or 15 minutes quickly identifying abnormalities on 200,000 cells can only be realized efficiently with a platform like the, like the RIC and using an, an R app. And for that, we need AI techniques uh, that are going to understand what is normal versus abnormal because a, a, a vast majority of the variations in performance metrics are totally normal. And that's the first step, uh, but then we'll rapidly implement fast root cause module and the framework to implement the necessary fix in the network in a closed loop manner. This is coming very soon, as uh, Steve was saying. And does Samsung's RIC also support TELUS's legacy radio access network? Uh, Stephen, let's come to you first on this. We support both the traditional RAN network and, uh, and, and our virtual RAN network. Obviously, the virtual RAN network is built on, on, on the sort of uh, like standards, if you like, of open RAN, so it has open interfaces, and with open interfaces, you can get an awful lot more data. And data is the fuel for AI. So the more data we get, the more high quality and varied data we get, the more interesting applications that we can build, uh, which will provide benefits for both Telus, their consumers, as well as Telus uh, as an organization. Uh, and the more the more um, interesting applications can be developed by companies like Telus and other third parties. So um, yeah, we support both. Um, but I think the bigger benefit will come from our open RAN. Okay, uh, and Bernard, I, I'm sure that this capability uh, you know, is very important to, to tell us as well. It is. One of the great outcomes from our partnership with Samsung Networks is the support for TELUS's long-term strategy because when we selected Samsung Networks five years ago, TELUS wasn't ready for open and virtual RAN immediately. So we started to deploy Samsung Networks as traditional RAN but our discussion at the very beginning, five years ago, were all about our plan to adopt open and virtual run in the near future. And this is why Samsung Networks RIC is supporting both traditional and open run products for TELUS. This is extremely important for us uh, until the end of 2029, where we'll, we will be 100% open run and virtual run. Uh, that's after the implementation of a frontal switching unit for our, all our traditional sites, but we have a period of time where we need both to be managed the same way. Today, about half of our network uh, is using Samsung's traditional RAN equipment and 18% on open and virtual RAN. So you can val imagine how valuable this is for TELUS and for our customers. Uh, we can gradually continue on our steady path towards a 100% open RAN network while benefiting from the RIC capabilities beyond our open RAN footprint. So that's great. Okay, fantastic. Great insights there. And uh, ultimately, Bernard, what improvements or benefits will the RIC enable for 
end users on the Telus network? Telus has always been focused on three things. And, you know, uh, our CEO repeats that constantly. Number one, best product. Number two, best customer service. And number three, best value for our customers. And if we focus on wireless networks, the product is the network. Moving to Open RAN and enabling the RIC leads directly to an overall best, better customer experience on our network. Being able to use AI to predict customers' network context in the time and geography domain will greatly improve the network decisions and how we can serve them with our very complex video access network. That yields, very concretely, better coverage and a more efficient use of our capacity, which translates to a better and more consistent data experience. Being able to quickly identify abnormalities to find root causes and implement actions to mitigate problems will also have a meaningful impact on our customer experience on our network. If we also look at Telus's focus on providing the best value for our customers, Open RAN and Virtual RAN provide meaningful procurement savings. But additionally to this, and this is just one example, with AI-enabled energy savings, we can save meaningfully on, capacity, on electricity. Uh, these are just a few examples to illustrate how Telus can offer better value to its customer without compromising the financial health of our operation and meet our sustainable ambitions. And this is just the beginning, to be honest. Uh, the non-real-time RIC is built to use AI techniques, and this leads to amazing outcomes. Open RAN and Virtual RAN also offer us a level of flexibility and other advantages that we never had in the past. But let me say that you know we're all very proud of our accomplishments so far, and I am a firm believer that Telus's open and virtual RAN strategy, you know, which the RIC is a big part of, and using great partners like Samsung Networks is positioning us as innovation leaders on the ongoing evolution of the 5G network and soon 6G towards the end of the decade, both of which are so important for Canada's digital economy. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Bernard. Um, we all look forward to, to seeing what this collaboration is going to bring in the coming years. And it's been really interesting to hear more about the deployment of Samsung's RIC on the TELUS network. So Bernard, Stephen, thanks very much for joining us today. Thank you. Okay.